Can you imagine owning over 7,000 cars? How about a sprawling 1,800 room palace adorned in gold? What if you even had a zoo in your backyard filled with exotic animals like white tigers and orangutans? For most of us, these are far-fetched fantasies, visions of wealth untold. But for one man hidden away in an obscure Southeast Asian nation, this kind of extravagance is everyday reality. His name is Hassan al-Bolkia, Sultan of Brunei, one of the last absolute monarchs left on Earth. His kingdom lies on the northern coast of the island of Borneo, surrounded by the richer and better-known nations of Malaysia and Indonesia. But hidden inside this green expanse of rainforest is a bounty that outclasses its neighbors, oil and gas reserves that have brought unimaginable wealth to this tiny nation and fuels its ruler's legendary golden lifestyle. But who is this sultan who lives as though out of the pages of Arabian Nights folklore? Why does he indulge in such extreme sensational luxuries when neighboring monarchs are moderating their excesses? Follow me as I unravel the mystery behind the man and take you on an exclusive tour of his golden empire, glimpsing the kind of wealth most of us can hardly fathom. Our first stop is Istana Nur al Iman, the Sultan's main residence and the largest palace in the world. This behemoth abode is over 2 million square feet, with 1,088 rooms, 257 bathrooms, 5 swimming pools, and a banquet hall that seats up to 5,000 guests. Everything is oversized here, befitting the ego of its owner. The palace drips in gold fixtures and fittings too. The front gates, the lamps in the corridors, even the drying racks in the kitchens are all gold-plated or decorated in gold leaf. As we wander the endless corridors, it's hard not to get disoriented. Guards stand at attention, fully suited despite the tropical humidity. But don't be fooled by the calm, because the compound houses a range of plush amenities. An exotic zoo with orangutans and Komodo dragons, a stable housing hundreds of the Sultan's prized Arabian stallions, a glittering mosque that hosts a congregation of 3,500 for Friday prayers. Everything at Istana Nurul Iman is bigger, glitzier, and more garish than one can imagine. Just the way the Sultan likes it. Yet this towering pleasure palace is still not enough for the Sultan. He has over 20 other residences scattered across Brunei and around the world. From the enormous Empire Hotel and Country Club he built for his 50th birthday, to homes on England's exclusive Millionaire's Row. Each residence tries to outdo the other in sheer self-indulgent luxury. But how exactly does he pay for these? From the most surprising of sources. The root of the Sultan's prolific wealth lies underground. In 1929, oil was first discovered in Brunei while it was still a British protectorate. Once production began, the tiny state grew steadily richer throughout the decades. Then, in 1967, the Sultan took control of Brunei after nearly 100 years of British rule. Leveraging Brunei's already substantial oil riches, he set to work rapidly expanding production. State-owned Brunei Shell Petroleum is now one of Asia's largest oil producers, pumping out over 160,000 barrels of black gold every day. Oil and gas today account for over 90% of Brunei's GDP and 95% of its exports. That means billions in discretionary income for the Sultan to finance not just his elaborate dwellings and decadent lifestyle, but also keep Brunei's 420,000 citizens happy with generous state handouts and subsidies. With virtually no taxes and appliances like air conditioners and flat-screen TVs heavily subsidized, Bruneians enjoy a very comfortable standard of living as the Sultan leverages his country's black gold to finance both his lavish lifestyle and his people's welfare. Yet what the Sultan splurges the most on year after year brings us to possibly the most astounding feature of his fortune, his automobile collection. Walking through the parking garage below Istana Nur al Iman feels like wandering through an exotic car showroom. The cavernous three-story garage houses row upon row of rare supercars worth tens of millions. Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, Bentleys, you name it. They are all preserved here in pristine condition for the Sultan's driving pleasure. And driving pleasure, this certainly brings. The Sultan reportedly owns up to 7,000 luxury vehicles, a handful of which boast gold-plated body panels or gold-finished interiors to match his status. At international auto auctions, he thinks nothing of paying millions for limited edition hypercars in one check that everyday Joes could not earn in a lifetime. Yet the Sultan seldom actually drives his prized vehicles. Most are kept purely for display and occasional use within palace compounds. After all, there are only so many sports cars even an absolute monarch could drive in the small nation of Brunei. Instead, they fulfill a different role as part of building the Sultan's public image both at home and abroad. 
While the Sultan has curtailed some of his more salacious international exploits, he still travels overseas frequently to indulge his obsessions. As we trail him across the globe, it becomes clear just how capitalistic the world's longest-serving monarch can be despite his diplomatic role. Take his love affair with London, his home away from home. Whether it's shopping on Oxford Street, cruising in his Rolls-Royce Corniche, or breakfasting at Claridge's, London has been the site of many lavish spending sprees. The most eye-popping? Back in 1986, he reportedly flew his barber from London to style his hair for a whopping $21,000 per cut. Yet the Sultan's most expensive hobby happens on the polo field. He reportedly spends $2 million a month on his 150 prized polo ponies stabled in various nations. He even had a polo field installed in Istana Nurul Aman next to its lavish swimming pool, just so he could train at home. And to ferry his stallions across the oceans, the Sultan custom fitted his personal Boeing 747 jet and cargo plane with air-conditioned horse stalls, of course. Nothing seems able to quench this billionaire Sultan's thirst for indulgence. Like a kid let loose in the world's largest candy shop, he wants for nothing, except the next novelty to catch his wandering eye. Yet even in paradise, there is trouble in Utopia. In recent years, the Sultan has faced growing anxieties, both at home and abroad, around the sustainability of his extravagant regime. With Brunei's oil production starting to falter, uncertainties around its future prosperity and ability to finance such royal decadence has grown. The Sultan has also faced criticism around human rights and growing religious fundamentalism, as he now governs Brunei under strict Sharia law. As Brunei's absolute monarch, Sultan Hassan al-Bolkaya lives an extraordinarily lavish lifestyle fueled by his country's oil wealth. His car collection, palaces, and decadent indulgences are unparalleled. However, declining oil production threatens to derail this fairy tale. Brunei now faces economic uncertainties. The Sultan must balance Western criticism of his unchecked extravagance with rising religious fundamentalism and strict Islamic law at home. It remains to be seen whether his pomp and indulgence can survive into the 21st century. But the Sultan is accustomed to privilege and will likely continue self-indulging rather than change his ways. So is his extreme opulence a relic of the past or fitting for Brunei's ruler? Either way, the exotic wonders of the Sultan's golden empire seemingly have no limits, even as clouds gather on the horizon.